Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to the Albion Yard YouTube channel. And in this presentation, we're going to be looking at DCC control and the Pico Code 75 ball head points. If you enjoy the presentation, please share, subscribe and like. Now, I don't often use DCC and a couple of friends have offered a couple of locomotives to uh, do some further testing. Now, one of the locomotives that uh, came under criticism was the Hornby L1 and Gilbert has been very kind in lending me his. It's DCC fitted, um, unmodified, and the other types that we've been fortunate enough to borrow is an A4, again from Gilbert. And Phil has kindly lent the blog for these tests and Castle, a S15, I'm struggling now, and a Battle of Britain, um, all DCC. So these will be interesting for us to try out. The Hornby A4 has got the rigid rear pony truck, as does the Battle of Britain. Now, the Battle of Britain has got the flangeless wheels fitted. The Hornby A4 has got the flanged wheels fitted. So I'm going to be very interested to see how those negotiate through the points, and particularly the crossings and the slip. The slip's really quite tight. It's the same geometry as the existing one. So it'll be interesting to see how those work through there. So without any further ado, Let's go and have a look at some trains. In this third presentation on the Pico Code 75 ball head points and crossings, we're going to be looking at DCC power. Now, some of the comments that have been online is that these points cause shorting problems, and I've not had any experience of that yet, including one of the locomotives, the Class 31 by Hornby, which was in the second presentation. I've now converted to DCC with the system and we're going to be trying a couple of locomotives on that. The L1, the example that you see in front of you here, is one of those types that has been commented on as causing problems. So I've been able to borrow one of these, thanks very much Gilbert, and this is straight from the box. There's been no changes to any of the back-to-backs or any of the running properties. So it's a DCC ready locomotive and we are ready to go so let's turn it on and see what happens this is the configuration then we are ready for the test an nce power cap the grain of wheat bulb is illuminated indicating that we have dcc power on the tracks now what i'm going to do is i'm going to demonstrate a short and i'll just put this piece of metal across the track and there we see the lights go out and we can see the cab readdressing itself and there you go, we're back in the room. So we know that if we get a metal to metal short, then the system is going to fault. The grain of wheat bulb will go out and the system will reset. So let's get the locomotive going. So here's the first test with the L1. First we're crossing the left hand point. And again, no fluctuations whatsoever from the grain of wheat bulb here indicating a partial short. The locomotive hasn't been maintained or, or cleaned especially rather for this test at all. It is straight from Gilbert's layout. It's run regularly as I understand it. And even though the locomotive stopped there, you'll note the grain of wheat bulb hasn't gone out. So there's not a short there, but I suspect it might just be a bit of dirty wheels on this one. We'll run it back across it again. Again, no hesitation in reverse. And forwards, no problem at all. So there's an L1. 
DCC powered, no problem at all through these points. Every loco I try through here, and I'm not getting a fault, it's more and more apparent that the points aren't the problem, but some locomotives are, and clearly there's no commonality across the locomotives either. If I've had a 31 that runs through here, no problem, yet two other people have had 31s that have had problems, it's certainly indicating to a back-to-back -back or wheel issue with the 31 manufacturer, and that's Hornby on that particular occasion. Now, we know back-to-backs with Ready to Run are all over the shop, so that I think is most likely where we're going to be finding our problems. Rather than it being the points or the point construction, it's going to be individual locomotives and individual back-to-backs varying within those. So that's enough of the L1. We've got an A4 to try, a Castle class and a West Country. So let's get those on and see how those do. We're back in DCC, another Hornby product this time. We have a Castle. Again, it's not been touched. It is out of the box. And no flickering whatsoever. I'll just skip over the bit where that front bogey um, derailed there. No one saw that, did they? It's nothing to do with the track, it was just to do with the incompetence of the operator. There you go, such is life. So we can see another DCC model running through these points and crossings. Again, no problems at all apart from the operator. Next locomotive test, this is a Hornby S15 DCC. Again, nothing done to it, apart from a couple of bits of detail added by Phil, the owner. It's not been run for a while, so it's a little bit jerky, but wheels, pickups, etc. all as per standard out of the box. And again, this is running through the track without any hesitation at all as far as shorts go. But as I say, it's been sitting around for a little while, so it's not quite as smooth as these models normally are. Again, bearing in mind how tight that uh, curve is in the single slip, something like uh, two and a half foot radius, I believe they are, uh, it works through there very well. This example then is a rebuilt Battle of Britain, Hornby, DCC and from the box. It's obviously not been run for quite a while, you can probably hear the screaming in the background. That's almost certainly down to lack of lubrication. Now this one has got the rear pony truck with the unflanged wheels on and again one or two people have commented that the flat wheel makes this bridge that causes a short and as you can see that just isn't happening, certainly not with this model. The jolt there was the controller, i.e. me, nothing to do with the locomotive, you can see it runs perfectly through there. 
without any incompetence from the controller. We'll go across slower. So there you go, that temporary halt whilst it stopped on the crossing there was just purely down to my incompetence. So apart from what appears to be a lack of lubrication, nothing wrong with Battle of Britons through these crossings, points and slips. And that's DCC just to clarify. This locomotive then, a Hornby A4, one of their first super detail variants, so it's got the rigid uh, pony truck underneath the cab with flangeless wheels. Correction, flanged fitted on this one, so it'd be interesting to see whether it works through the points any differently to the Battle of Britain that we saw earlier. Similar wheelbase, apart from this one has flanged wheels, whereas the Battle of Britain had flange less. So this one's definitely not as happy going through that sharp radius curve of the slip, certainly not backwards. And again, it's a little bit lumpy going forwards, but I suspect if we did the swap out for the flangeless wheels, then that would resolve that issue. I know that was interesting. I don't know whether you saw it, but going in reverse through that crossing, there was a very, very slight fluctuation on that grain of wheat bowl. And it did it again there. So we'll try going through slow and see if we can actually provoke this to stop. It's definitely doing it. So there is a temporary short there somewhere and interestingly only in one direction so that's immediately well actually did it both ways there didn't it but what I'm noticing is it seems to be the tender rather than the locomotive that's doing it as the tender goes across a crossing we're seeing that fluctuation there's nothing with the actual locomotive the main locomotive but just purely on the tender And I think it is the rear axle on the tender because it seems to be when this goes across the crossings that we get a short. So I suspect it's something wrong with the tender. So let's just use the tender by itself and we'll zoom in and take a closer look. So I've still got the DCC power on. We can see that with a grain of wheat bulb here. And I've unconnected the locomotive, obviously. And rolling it backwards and forwards through this crossing here, I get an intermittent short. There you go. Now it's not happening every time. So that's definitely not the track. It can't be. What you can't see is I'm putting, if you can see me wobbling the tender there, I'm doing a slight wobble laterally with it. So at some point there. It's this rear axle here, this one, that is causing the problem. When that goes across the knuckle here, and it's just before it gets to the knuckle, so it's this side here. I'll find a better pointer, some a piece of rail here. It's when it crosses there that I think it's touching these two forward parts of the knuckle so if I put this through here there you go if you can imagine that being a fat wheel and it goes through that's when it shorts and I suspect that's what's happening here now I've got my calipers and I'm just going to turn those on they're zeroed I don't know whether we can see this properly decently in the all right let's see what this back to back is now I normally run at 14.5 
14.13 so that's as it's come out of the factory therefore the back to back there means that on this point or on this particular crossing rather and I suspect as people have reported it's happened on crossings as well with other types if the back to back is too narrow it allows the wheel to partly bridge from this rail here onto this rail here which is giving the short circuit so that is the problem not with the points it's a problem with the locomotives and with individual locomotives because we've seen in DC on video 2 of this sequence the Hornby 31 running through we've seen a Hornby L1 in DCC which people have said causes problems not causing problems so that would indicate the issue lies and it seems to be particularly with Hornby with the back-to-back -back of some wheel sets in some models and when you get them touching the two rails here it causes a short. I'm back with DC now and we've got the power on you can see the grain of wheat bulb on and this is an early Battle of Britain from Hornby now it's the one before they put the rigid rear pony truck on the back-to-backs are all over the shop it's as it's come out of the box and the pony truck wheels here have in fact got a 14 mil back-to-back -back. now I normally use 14.5 now what I'm hoping to be able to do is to show just by waggling these around that we'll get as we get no, there near to this crossing you can see that we're getting a short circuit and occasionally you'll get a blue spark as well but that validates the point that if your back-to-backs are too tight with these points and crossings there is sufficient room for them to cause a short now that's a problem with the back-to-backs nothing to do with the track because the track works fine and I've had over well 75 now different types of locomotive running through these without a problem it's only when you find an extreme example like this and the A4 that we looked at that has got one axle on the uh, tender that is a problem and I've no doubt that the chaps who have reported issues with these have got similar problems ie the back-to-backs have been too tight and I think that comes down to poor manufacturing tolerances at the factories it's not um, unique to Hornby back-to-backs are all over the place if you've looked at them from any of the manufacturers and if that's one thing that comes from this that could be useful is that pressure is put onto the manufacturers to ensure that they have a standard back-to-back -back measurement and that it's consistent I hope that helps Thank mm -hmm. you.